Hi. We're indoor. Pets. We're just hanging out with Rob at Front Row Live. You guys are currently promoting the debut album, the highly anticipated debut album, like you said, five years in the making. Um, let's talk about Be Content and you know the creative process behind this album that drops March 8th. Um, James, you were the main man involved with the production side of it. Um, what is it like for you to be in the band and also be you know, the producer behind it? Uh, I did my lymph nodes in doing it. Uh, I, um, I don't know, I guess it started at, just because, I mean, these guys at the very beginning came to me to record and I just really wanted to be involved with the project. And then we just sort of carried on, the, it just carried on from there. Like we kind of had done a few bits where other people had mixed things or co-productions and things like that. Right. And it just seemed to make sense that the, uh, at the end of the day, the four of us can agree on what we did, did with the four of us in the room, basically. And that just seems to work at the moment. There might be a day where it doesn't, but yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's the way, that's the way this album was made. Yeah. yeah. Now, Jamie, what, what has been the creative process behind this, this uh, album for you? Uh, lots of self-loathing, sitting in cold showers, just <laughs> not wanting to be alive, and then getting wow. a pad out and writing about it, doing an Instagram story, uh, a little bit of attention seeking, <laughs> but mostly love. <laughs> Great way to end that. <laughs> so when you, when you open up about situations like that, getting vulnerable, like how do you get comfortable like that, knowing that so many people are going to hear it? It's quite... Um, it's quite intentional for the, the music to be quite uplifting mm. and kind of powerful and feel good uh, so that it kind of almost masks the lyrics in a way because I feel like if it was very downbeat with the lyrics it would be very depressing right. but the fact that it's not too twee and poppy as well the lyrics kind of make it a little bit unique well I like to think what do you think yeah I like it yeah I like what you guys are doing I it's a it's a different sound it's not something you hear every day so I, that's what I appreciate the most as no, well. I, I agree with you I'm yeah. glad we're on the same page we are we are we're, we're on the right we're on the right page right now now as far as like instrumentation goes like you know he gets the lyrics done you know the behind the scenes of creating the music um what is that like for you guys uh jamie sort of brings the guitar and the vocals and some of the instrumentation with him mm. from so the songs come as like a like a preformed thing and then we sort of i write the drums mostly straight after that okay and then from there we build out is the bass line going to have any extra bits apart from the root note and then James adds production over the top of that so it's quite a sort of structured process it's like guess. a really good microwave yeah. dinner you know <laughs> Jamie brings it in and then we chuck it in the, in the microwave yeah. and then pudding and it just works. <laughs> that's how it goes you call it microwaves here yeah yeah sweet that's exactly what, it is. what you're saying is that I bring a nice dinner and you fill it with radiation <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. Yeah. You film lid, and then we cook it for two minutes, and then you get it out and stir it so that the heat spreads, and then we put it back in. And then, and then everyone else eats it. Like I said, you guys are unique. <laughs> so it works. It's perfect. So, you know, as you guys are creating this, this record, um, what has been the, the most challenging track on this record? Maybe a track that kind of got revisited multiple times, a track that got trashed and then brought back to life. Like, was there a specific track that you guys feel that way about? There's a track that uh, is probably going to drop the same as a single when the album comes out uh, in March that I think Jamie brought to the band quite a long time before, like midway through the album writing process. And then it went through various structural and arrangement things and then it then it went away again and then it came back and i think we're happy with how it is now i hope so it's going to be yeah and it's sort of pushing a, a, an edge of something that we wanted to try we don't know if we'll go there again but yeah yeah, yeah i like that it was a it was a song that sounded completely different to all of the other songs so we were always quite scared to release it on yeah. its own but it fits perfectly it with fits the album with the record yeah it the, fits the writing really style and the, the themes that yeah, it's called The Mapping of Dandruff, by the way, okay. <laughs> just in case you wanted to pitch the song. <laughs> so when, when you guys get into the studio and create that one song that is completely different from everything else, I'm sure that's kind of scary at the same time. But, you know, what was it about this song that you guys believed in it so much that it had to be on the record? Uh, that, that song, there was, a, there was a demo right at the beginning of the band that had full band or almost full band instrumentation. And then, because we have a system where even though we grew up in the same town, we actually write via Dropbox. And, and essentially, Jamie will put stuff in there for us to look at and listen to. 
And then there was just a, a demo version of that song that was completely different to the full band Worked Out One. That was literally just his voice and an acoustic guitar. And I heard that and was like, the song should be like that, not like this thing. Right. And it, we grew it back from a, an even older demo than what we were working on, if that makes sense. So that, that one grew. It, there's something in that original d demo that was just like f fragile about it that, right. that needed to be preserved and not be beaten over. I mean, we, might, we may have beaten over it in the process later on, but I think it's okay. Now, in the last five years, like, how do you guys feel the evolution of the band has been? Whether it's the writing process, the performance, um, or even like, like the the songwriting for uh, the instrument. I'm sorry, the instrumentation. Like, what do you feel that evolution has been like? I think our live shows come on quite a lot in the last five years. I feel like we're pretty solid now as a live mm. show. We all sort of know what we're doing, and I think it comes across quite well. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But then, like, I also say, it, I mean, this is more for Jamie to answer, but with a creative process, as James said as well, of like songs like sort of going and then coming back. Yeah. yeah you, like you feel like you you create, you write the songs where they should be, and like slot them in, and then there's songs that we've released uh, like before we announced the album um, that people are like, why, that on, why isn't that on the album? It's just that it doesn't it doesn't fit. But so we've, like, I feel like we've got to the place now where we know what songs. People, people should be hearing, I guess, and like what's uh, and, and our live show as well. What songs we should play live over songs that we should maybe drop out if we're not doing like a longer set or yeah. As you guys see that live show kind of evolve, does that? Um, do you guys consider that when you guys are in the studio creating the music? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, first and foremost, the thing that we do best is perform the songs to people we, we love to be in the studio but um, we want to be touring as much as possible so we always kind of have in mind how we can deliver the song live because they're always going to be slightly different to, to the record but um, I think we're probably slightly more aggressive slightly heavier live which uh, is intentional right. it's something that we've always kind of wanted to, like to really surprise people when they come out and they haven't seen us play live before because we hit them hard at the beginning yes. of the set. The radiation comes out. That's it, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I've noticed in from the, the sort of first, say, five demos that we had as a band yeah. that we then sort of recorded, learned how to play them live, learned how to reproduce them live. I've noticed a change in Jamie's writing style throughout that sort of thread that so, oh, that really works live. Let's do more of those style of things or whatever it is. And we sort of, it's been a, an evolution that probably nobody's seen or maybe 20 people in our hometown have seen. But so we probably arrived quite fully formed to people. But and we, and it, we, maybe I don't know how other bands work these days, but we don't jam in a room and haven't jammed in a room to write a, ever to write a song. It's always sort of demo, build it out, record the basically the final thing and then we go back and relearn what we did in the studio afterwards to work out how we're going to do that live how and it's ended up with multiple amps and multiple things going on to make yeah. the sound as big as we possibly can basically I think that is the first time I've heard of a band do that yeah. I feel like everybody always wants that ambience One day, but yeah. the what we've got works and like uh, maybe even in, if it's just recording so we wrote that way learn how to play them live and then recorded the actual record live that would be really awesome to do someday i don't know if that would be second record or now as as the writing process kind of evolves um how does that impact your vocals uh i'm trying personally i'm trying to write melodies that uh are catchy in without having to be over dramatic mm -hmm. i think when i used to write songs near the beginning i used to try and always hit big notes in songs because i yeah. thought that that was impressive but then i realized that actually there are so many songs that sound like they're written by a five-year-old but that's what makes them so like unique and kind of authentic because you can sing like pretty much every beatles melody it's <laughs> so simple and yet so unique and original i kind of try to do that as much as i can now i try not to force Right. emotion I'd rather let people feel it rather than telling them this is an angry is bit yeah. yeah this is how you're supposed to feel <laughs> so the record drops uh, March 8th you guys are here in LA right now what are the plans for 2019 what can we expect for you guys uh, so we, after today we've got the show tonight and then we uh, fly back and we got a fairly quiet February is looking at the moment and then we uh, do a bunch of installs for the uh, album drop in March and then we hit the road in the UK in April uh, and then festivals, yeah, UK festivals circuit starts, so hit that. Yeah, hopefully some Europeans and hopefully 
Maybe not this year, but uh, hopefully we'll be back here for some as well. Yeah, I think the intention is to come back to the States yeah. pretty much as soon as we can, yeah. from a personal standpoint. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'd love to come back, so I don't know what actual plans we've got at the moment, but right. yeah, I think they're working on stuff. So. Awesome, guys. And to close us off, like, what is, what is Indoor Pets all about? Why did you guys get together and start creating music? Indoor Pets is about four people that aren't necessarily cool being very cool together. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's hot. So I'm gonna look directly into the camera for this bit. It it's hot. You heard it here, guys. Indoor pets. Rob here with Front Row Live. Thanks for watching. Be sure to get the new album. It's called Be Content. March 8th. Thanks for watching.